the fifth charge against educators and against education is the action of prohibition of getting jobs to a juvenile student. By law, employers are treating juvenile students in tween age or in teenage as liabilities. Thus, no employment for the juvenile students. And there are some laws that juveniles have to get a work permit to work. I do not care that education is important. There is such thing as being overeducated. I believe that education is a liability because there are costs for education and because education may not guarantee a bright future. Trying to get an education counts as a form of gambling. Pretend that the juvenile student has no parent slash guardian and that the juvenile student is responsible for the payments and for being educated. The juvenile student is the one who goes after the high school diploma, not the parent slash guardian. When the juvenile student has only liabilities like education without any assets like jobs, the juvenile student's life is like heck. You think that juvenile labor is terrible. In school, juvenile students get physical pain by writing and by carrying textbooks and juvenile students get mental pain by bullying from educators. The sixth charge against educators and against education is the sabotage of the grading scales. School administrators sabotage grading scales so the students can fail easily. But school administrators want the students to know everything as a requirement and as a reality check by fear to go into the real world. A fair grading system is 91% to 100% for an A, 81% to 90% for a B, 71% to 80% for a C, 61% to 70% for a D, and 0% to 60% for an F. Students can be afraid of getting bad grades slash grades. And students are afraid that the grades from school can be carried over to reality. There is a conspiracy theory that educators are treating students not to be good enough regardless of the student's respect to the educators. Grades do not contain grace. Grading is an action of judging people. God does not care about the grades in the material world. God cares about our souls. God unconditionally loves everybody and merits on earth does not get you into heaven. And see Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9.
the seventh charge against educators and against education is giving false promises of positive opportunities. I do not believe in opportunities of positive events anymore because of my truthful discoveries about permanent criminal records during juvenile times and during adult times. Adult people who reached legal age may be disqualified from opportunities of positive events, even though those same adult people who reached legal age committed crimes in their juvenile years. People in authority perfectly plan the right time for juveniles to snap by using age limitations, by legislating so many laws, and by enforcing so many laws so juveniles will be forced to go to heck permanently. People in authority lie about opportunities of positive events for people thanks to legal conspiracies of legislating ridiculous laws and of enforcing ridiculous laws so people in authority can keep the prideful honor. The eighth charge against educators and against education is giving false encouragement. Trust is like a game of luck. Educators say, you can do it, to the students. But what if the educators set up a trap like political correctness or like anti-plagiarism enforcement against the students or like any conspiracy to fail students on purpose? The serious truth is that negative restrictions trump positive encouragements. Once the negative event hits the student, the student will have permanent fear by not taking the future positive event by losing his slash her self-confidence and it is like post-traumatic stress disorder. Take it from the Spongebob Squarepants episode Artist Unknown. First Squidward Tentacles purposely criticized Spongebob Squarepants with Spongebob's artwork so Squidward wanted Spongebob to follow the rules of art. Second, Squidward encouraged Spongebob to perform the art that Squidward detested. But Spongebob was feared by the rules of art from Squidward. The most common grammar error is that human authorities slash educators misused the auxiliary verb can for the permission. The correct usage is that you use the auxiliary verb may for the permission. You use the auxiliary verb can for the ability. If human authorities slash educators use the word 
cannot to the students human authority slash educators will be found guilty of psychological murder by poisoning the minds of the student victims. Can educators read students' minds about the truth of the students' abilities? Educators cannot read students' minds about the truth of the students' abilities. Students truthfully have limits too. The ninth charge against educators and against education is anti-plagiarism policies. There is software that will detect plagiarism. Very creepy! According to my observations of statistics, you know that I am an expert in mathematics. There is an increase of population of authors, dead or alive, of any medium of work, thus having too many copyright slash patent slash trademark barriers that are registered. And we are talking about hundreds of thousands of intellectual property barriers that we are forced to respect lockdowns against free creativity thus making our lives a living heck and thank you very much USPTO and Library of Congress in school there are assignments that require the student's own creativity as a graduation requirement. And plagiarism is prohibited. The more the people, dead or alive in society, the less the fresh ideas, the more the accusations of plagiarism, thus making life harder for younger generations. And that is a conspiracy theory to prevent students from graduation. What if your own words are gibberish to educators? There is such thing as permanent creator's block. I have permanent creator's block since fifth grade. I had to come up with my own fictional story as an assignment for English class, but I had no copyright free ideas in my mind. So I plagiarized from a children's fictional book. I was found guilty and I have that unhealthy fear of violating intellectual property laws ever since. This is also the same thing in the business world. We need to quit the pro-intellectual property madness for the sake of sharing the resources to each other without legal restrictions and for the sake of an efficient society. And pro-intellectual property actions count as a form of bullying and pro-intellectual property actions are not 
an example of community development and see first Corinthians chapter 3 verses 9 to 15 nobody owns intellectual property rights because everything belongs to God and see Psalm 24 verse 1 and see Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 and see second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 part 4 will continue next time